Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this is Dave Grammerstorff from RP Connor. And today I wanna to walk you through how you can use the new Google breakout rooms in a bunch of different scenarios. I'll, I'll talk through a couple of the basics of how to use breakout rooms, but I also wanna show how you can, as a teacher, you know, using the typical setup that we have in Suffern Central, how you can sort of manage those rooms and how you can be in a couple of places at once. Um, so a couple of things right off the bat. I'll just talk about setup first of all. Um, right now I am at home and I'm trying to mimic the same kind of setup that I would have at school. So I have my main meet I'm controlling off of my Chromebook. That's typically what I do at school as well. I'll use my Chromebook to kind of run the meet and run the video. And then typically in the classroom, I have my desktop computer that I'll use to like share things with kids. Um, here at home, I'm using my own personal laptop to do that kind of work. So having a two device setup is actually really helpful when you're looking to use breakout rooms because again, you can run your main meet from here, but you can have another computer uh, with another version of yourself that's in another uh, place where kids can ask questions. And I'll, I'll show how that can work in a minute. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is here on my Chromebook, I'm gonna click on this button with the shapes on it. And those are activities. That's the new activities button that we use to get into breakout rooms. So when I click that, I see that I have three different choices here. And the top one is breakout rooms. Yes, we also have polls and Q&A features as well. We're gonna, not gonna talk about those today. So when I click on breakout rooms, very simply, uh, it starts off by telling me everybody that I have in my main uh, call here. Now you see that I have it set right now for two breakout rooms. That is the minimum number of breakout rooms that you can have. I can go, I can six, 10, 20. Uh, I'm not sure what the limit is, but you have more than enough breakout rooms available to you if you wish. For the purposes of my first uh, demonstration here, I'm just gonna start with two breakout rooms. If I hit this clear button, that's just gonna put all of the participants here in the main call. And I can sort them into breakout rooms however I'd like. So, you know, if I have one, two breakout rooms, five breakout rooms, I can take my entire list of kids that are in the call and I can sort them into those breakout rooms before I send them off. So, um, you know, one of the things that I would do if you're gonna do a big uh, group of kids and take everybody and put them into multiple breakout rooms is just have that list ahead of time. Um, you know, so if you have group projects going on, for instance, you might want to sort of say, okay, team one is going to be these three kids, team two is going to be these kids, and have that worked out in next to you, because you can't sort those before the call starts, you have to sort the kids into breakout rooms once your Google Meet has already started. So everybody that's in the Meet can show up here in this main call and you can sort them. And the fastest way to sort them is not by clicking their name and dragging them. That takes forever um, and it can be a little bit laggy on the Chromebook. The fastest way is to click in here and just start typing their name. So if I type L-O-R for Lori, her name comes right up and I can hit enter and she pops up there. And let's pretend I wanna put Kathy in that room as well, C-A-T, hit enter, she's in the room. So I can quickly pop into that box, type names, hit enter. It'll take me less than a minute to sort a class of 20 into, uh, into the breakout rooms where I wanna send them. So right now, the way this is set up is Kathy and Lori are going to be sent to breakout room one. There's this other David Grammerstorff here. And if you watch, I'm gonna now join on my other screen. I'm gonna mute myself and turn off the camera. And I'm gonna hit join now. Okay, so on this device, I've now joined the meet and I'm on my main device in the meet, okay? And that's important because what I can do now, let's pretend I have the entire class in the main call. 
And then I want to pull just these two kids to talk to them about something. Let's say we want to go over a math problem they had a hard time with or whatever it is. So I can take these two people, Kathy and Lori, and send them to breakout room one. But I can also leave myself on this other computer in the main room. So that way, if everybody else in the class is in the main room and I'm just pulling those two kids, I can still be monitoring the chat and monitoring what's going on in the main room on this device while I have my small group over in that one breakout room. So let me just show you what that looks like when I click open rooms. Kathy and Lori are getting a message right now uh, inviting them to breakout room one. So they're going to click that message and join breakout room one. And I'm clicking join here on my main uh, Chromebook. So that will send my main Chromebook into breakout room one. But if you notice over here on this device, I have a message that says that inviting me to breakout room one, I'm going to hit cancel. So on this device, I'm still left in the main room. So now over here in my breakout room, I've got uh, Kathy and Lori are both here. Um, and so now I can talk to Kathy and Lori and I can talk to them about, you know, whatever it is that we want to talk to. And in the meantime, over here on my other device, I can um, go back and check out the chat. And so I'm going to want to make sure that kids are muted in that main room and I can see what kinds of things they're talking about. The way that I would use this um, is this. Let's say I'm doing independent work. So I just did a, you know, a mini lesson, math, reading, writing, whatever it is, and I'm sending kids off to do independent work, right? So those kids that are doing independent work, I might have them all stay in the main room. But then I want to pull kids to join me in a breakout room to discuss things or work on things or go over a problem or whatever it is. So I can take a couple of kids at a time, send them that invite to the breakout room. They come join me. And everybody else is working independently in the main room. Now, I'm going to want to spend a little bit of time establishing norms of behavior for what kids are doing when they're in these different situations. So ahead of time, I'm going to have worked with my kids and I don't care if they're fourth graders or 12th graders or whatever. I want to let them know my expectations. So I'm going to tell them that in that main room, when you're working independently, maybe it's, there's no microphones coming on. If you have a question, ask me in the chat. And that way, all those kids, if most of the class is in that main room, you don't have kids unmuting and asking questions the whole time and distracting everybody else while they're working. They can just ask a question quietly in the chat, right? So let's pretend I'm here and I'm working with um, Kathy and Lori on whatever we're talking about. I keep an eye on that chat in the main room. So if a kid has a question, I say, oh, okay, I'm going to have to get to that kid next when I'm done with this. So I finish up with Kathy and Lori here. I say, Kathy, Lori, I'm going to send you back to the main room now, okay? You're going to get an invite on your screen in a minute to go back there. So I press this leave button. And that can send me back to this main room. Sorry, my the Chromebook's going to take an extra minute because I'm using Screencastify to record this video while I'm doing this. So I'm kind of asking a lot of this uh, of this video. Now, uh, Kathy and Lori, how did you get back here? Mm -hmm. That's right. So the other way that I could do that is by closing the breakout rooms. All right. So they can, they can leave and go back to the main room by clicking on that bar across the top, or I can close the breakout rooms. And if I close all rooms, everybody, no matter what room they're in, is going to get a, a, a dialog box on their screen that says, go back to the main room. And they'll click on that and go back. 
So we can each leave the breakout room and go back to the main room, or I can close them all. So right now there are no breakout rooms open. Um, but once again, I can close the, that breakout room, go back to the main room. And then I remembered that I had a kid that asked me a question in the chat in the main room before while I was off with Kathy and Lori. So now I can go and I can clear and I can send, make sure everybody is listed as being in the main call. And now I can take that kid that had a question and I can add them to the breakout room. And then now when I hit open rooms, then I'm going to be working with that kid. So, uh, so that's how you could use breakout rooms. If you just have everybody kind of working independently and you want to pull one kid or a handful of kids at a time to, to work on something kind of off to the side. Um, as I alluded to earlier, you can obviously also use breakout rooms where you have group work going on. So, um, you know, let's say you have, you're doing a science project and you have teams of three. So you could sort your class into those, um, you know, five different breakout rooms, six different breakout rooms, press the open rooms button, and it'll send everybody an invite to whatever breakout room they need to go to. Um, the thing that you need to keep in mind there is you as the teacher, if you have two devices, you could be in one of the breakout rooms and you can keep the other one in the main room using that trick that I just showed you. You cannot be in all five or six or eight of the breakout rooms at once. So again, that's really gonna take a lot of, um, of norm setting with your kids and talking about expectations. You're gonna need to do a lot of teaching about when you're in a breakout room, you need to stay on task. You have a specific job that you need to accomplish. Uh, because if you're not in a breakout room at that moment, uh, you need kids to know that you're expecting them to stay on task and be working on whatever it is they need to be working on. And especially at first, you know, what what I was doing with my kids in the first couple of days is spending a couple, uh, I mean, 30 seconds maybe in each of the breakout rooms and popping into each breakout room very rapidly. So um, that way the kids are getting the message that you know, Mr. G is always watching and and he could show up at any second and we need to make sure that we're staying focused and on task. So I'm going to um, play around with this shuffle button and see what happens. When I press shuffle, it's going to randomly assign kids to different breakout rooms. That may be something that you find useful in different scenarios as well. So, um, so when I do that, I do open rooms. Kathy and Lori are each going to get an invite to a different breakout room. All right. And you can imagine that happening with, um, you know, with with a whole class full of kids and using five breakout rooms or six or seven. And so, again, as a teacher, what I can do is I can join each one. So I'm going to pop into breakout room one. I'll hit join. That'll send me in there. And uh, once that loads, I can check in on Kathy. Again, this is taking a, a touch longer than it would for you if you weren't recording a, a video to share with everybody. This uh, it's taken me a minute just because of uh, everything I'm asking this Chromebook to do. But I can pop in here with Kathy and I can say, hey, Kathy, uh, how's it going in here? You're staying on task, right? You're not talking about Among Us playing that with your friends last night? Good. Okay. Great. Uh, good work. Okay, I see what you're doing. I'll be back to visit in a minute to check up and see if you answered questions two and three. Heading over to breakout room two. So now I can hit join over here for breakout room two. And I'm going to leave Kathy. And I'm going to pop into breakout room two now. And see how Lori's doing. Once this loads... And again, as this is happening, remember that on my other computer, um, it's going to keep asking me, hey, do you want to join breakout room two on that computer also? And I'm just going to hit cancel and stay in the main room. So now I'm in breakout room two with Lori. Hey, Lori, how's your independent work doing? Uh, great. Put down that slinky. Please uh, stay focused. All right. I'll be back to check up on you in a minute. So now I can... Um, I can close all rooms again as, as the teacher running this whole thing. When I do that, 
uh, both Kathy and Lori in their individual breakout rooms are going to get a dialogue box asking them to go back to the main room and I will see them over there. All right, so now we're all heading back to the main room. And again, I found it really helpful to keep that second device in the main room at all times, even though I'm in uh, the breakout rooms on this one, just because I've had scenarios where a kid is, uh, you know, has a question and they need me right away. And it's not something where they can wait for me to return to their group in the breakout room. So they say, Mr. G, you know, this is an emergency. I have a, we, uh, my group can't continue if I don't ask you this question right away. So they'll have, they'll send a kid from their breakout room to the main room and say, Hey, Mr. G, we need you right away. Please come to breakout room two. And then, so I'll see that message over on that other computer and I'll say, Ooh, let me go back over to that breakout room. So um, hopefully this video gave you some ideas, not only of kind of how the basics of breakout rooms work, but also the logistics of how you might put that into practice, especially using uh, a two device setup. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I know that, uh, you know, John is obviously available and, and helping out with all of these things too. His videos I found very helpful and, and useful. So, um, all right. Thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully I'll hear from some of you.